of things that are necessities in life. I'm not talking about wants. I'm talking about needs. Listen, to condi the condition things are in now, you don't need just enough. We need overflow. I want to get that in your spirit today. I want to get overflow in your spirit. Tell somebody, say, you need to get overflow in your spirit. We, we need to get just enough out of our spirit, just getting by out of our spirit, just trying to make it. We got to get it out of our spirit. We need overflow today. We need supernatural. We need net-breaking miracles. Oh, God. Oh, God. Bless his name. I'm talking about how to get supernatural net-breaking miracles and overflow where there is so much overflow you got to tell others come and get some of this because I have more than I can handle I need you to come and get some come on y'all get your boat get yours and bring it to mine and we going to be able to fill both of our bank accounts up oh bless his name y'all going to come go with me today Don't come go with me today how do we get the overflow that God has for us? There's three ways we got to get it. There's three ways. Number one, we got to let Jesus in the boat. We got to let Jesus in our boat. Come on, tell somebody, say, say let Jesus in your boat. See, I, I, I want you to understand that, that we've got to let him in the boat. We've got to make him the master of the boat. Peter is on water. He is there with the other disciples. And some of the disciples are in the other boat. And while they're on the, in the water, while they're in the boats, they had not caught nothing all night. But Peter understands something. Peter got a hold of something. He, he said, I got to let Jesus in this boat. And, and I got to make him the master of the boat. Your boat is your soul. In fact, not only does your boat represent your soul, it represents soul prosperity. Anybody ever heard of soul prosperity? prospering in your soul prospering even as your soul prospers the, the waters represent life and as we are on the waters of life we have our soul that must be anchored in Jesus he has to become the master of our boat the master of our soul he's got to be on and in our boats notice in this verse how Jesus calls them children. He, he calls them children. He calls them children because children represents the new, not the old. Children represents the future, not the past. Children, by Jesus calling them children, when he gets their attention because now he's in their boat. How many have let Jesus on your boat? He's in your boat now. Uh, and, and, and he's on their boat and they've let him in there and so he says children because it represents the higher it represents the soul the mental and the emotions that we have which only Christ can have control over only he can have control over my mind only he can have control over my emotions the development of your soul is the most important thing you've got to do as a believer. You've got to get hold of your soul. You know, there's no, reason, there's no accident that we sing a lot about the soul. The Bible and, and talks about the soul a lot, but we have, we have a song that says, My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. We say, Be still, my soul. The Lord is on my side, huh? We, 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 we sing, my soul is anchored in the Lord. Because our soul development is the most important thing for us to do. And listen, it wasn't until I began to operate in complete obedience in my soul to God that I began to see abundance in my life. 
It was not until I began to allow God to take control of my soul when I let Jesus be the master of my boat that unusual blessings came into my life. It wasn't until I gave him that control when I let him have complete obedience from me that I began to see unusual favor. How many need some unusual blessing? You need some unusual favor. Every time I obey God, I promise you that when you obey God, that opportunities and blessings will come in your life. I promise you that. God wants to give you more than what you need. His dream is for you is, is bigger than anything you can ever dream of. Dream big. Stop dreaming little. Dream big. If you went to sleep and had a little dream, wake up. Go back to sleep and have you a big dream. God's will is to exceed your dreams. That's his dream. That's his will. Because God delights in giving you exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. It says, now to him who is able. Somebody said if we just stop right there. If we just stop right at now unto him that's able because we know he's able. We know he's able to do anything. We know he's able to do everything we need him to do. But it says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly. Some of y'all know it. Come on, say it with me. Above all that we ask or think. Now, now watch this. Watch this. It says it, says it qualifies it. It says according to the power that works in us. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. Touch your neighbor and say, you got to get this. You, you got to get this. He's able, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think, but it is according to the power that works not in him, but in you. Because you have the power. We know God is able. We know God has power. But there's power in you that has to be put to work. Listen, God wants to bless you beyond your wildest dreams. But it was not until Simon launched out into the deep that he ended up with a net-breaking, boat-sinking load of fish. You will be amazed at your catch when you step out of your comfort zone. When you step out of your comfort zone. Somebody is in your comfort zone today. Oh, that's, that's why Spirit wanted me to talk to you today. He wanted me to talk to you about Simon and how God called him out of himself, beyond himself, and into himself because he was able to trust God and be obedient to God and step out of his comfort zone. He stepped out of his comfort zone and he launched out into the deep with Jesus. You don't do it by yourself. Tell somebody, I say, I'm not going by myself. I'm not going by myself. Where he leads me, I will follow. If he tells me to go, I'm going to go. What he tells me to do, I'm going to do it. But I'm not going to do it by myself. I'm not going to go by myself. Jesus, you got to go with me. Every now and then while I'm running this race, I, 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 look, I look around and I say, Jesus, are you running with me? Are you running with me, Jesus? Because Jesus has got to come with us. As we go out of our comfort zone, as we launch out into the deep, we've got to make sure Jesus is with us. Listen, God wants to, you to break away from your comfort zone. He wants you to step out in faith. This is a faith walk. To be a Christian, to be a believer is a faith walk. It is a step of faith. You've you got to do what he put in your heart. 
You got to do what he put in your heart. I, I, I wish I had enough time today because, listen, God has put something in your heart. He put it in your heart. He allowed it to come into your life, into your mind, into your imagination and your mind so that you would allow him to do what he wants to do in your life. And you can't let fear or doubt or a comfort zone stop you. You got to do what, what, what he put in your heart. First Thessalonians, I want you to understand this soul prosperity because that's what it means to be a believer. It means for your soul to prosper. First Thessalonians chapter 5, 23, it says, Now may the God of peace himself. So in other words, he going to do it. I'm glad I don't have to do this. I'm glad he does this. He's in my boat. Touch somebody and say, he's in my boat. In fact, he's not only in my boat, he's the master of my boat. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. And, and he's going to help me. He's going he's to sanctify me completely. It says, and may your whole heart, your whole spirit, rather, your whole soul and body. Say this with me. Your spirit, spirit. your soul, soul, and body. The whole spirit, the whole soul the whole body be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls it says is faithful. If he called you to it, he's going to call you through it. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. If he called you and he did call you and when he called you, he's going to help you to fulfill it because he's faithful and he'll do it. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. See, God created us just like him. He created us, the Bible says, in his image and after his likeness. He created us, God is a trinity. And he created us trinity just like him. Please understand that you are a tripart being. You are a tripart being. You, you have a spirit. And the reason that God gave you a spirit is so you will be capable of God consciousness. And you can be capable of communication with God. You cannot communicate with God except in the spirit. Tell somebody, say, you got to get this. You, you, you got to get this. Then listen, how many prayers you pray that God does not hear no prayer? How many prayers you pray that God does not answer? No prayer. Every prayer you pray, every, every time you talk to God, God hears you and God answers your prayers. But the reason he hears you and the reason he answers, because you are praying in the spirit. There's no other way to communicate and talk with God. Don't let nobody fool you. It's about the spirit. That's why he created you a spirit so you will be capable of God consciousness, capable of communication with God. The reason why he created you a soul so we would have self-consciousness, so we would be able to do for self, so we would be able to, to understand self. The reason why he created you a body is because he wanted you to have senses senses he wanted you to be able to be aware of what the world is what the world is about and how the world works because you are in the world but you are not of the world you have power over the world and so a soul that is sold out and committed to God is a soul that has power over the world you got to have power over this world you can't let this world get you all down and get you all confused and make you all defeated. You can't let this world and what happens in the courtroom or what happens in the state house or what happens in the... You can't let that get you upset. You can't let that begin to turn you to another opinion and another way than what God has already given you. Because what God says 
Oh, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. It says, it says that in 3 John 2, that beloved, I pray, I believe I, that you would prosper even as your soul prospers. So your soul has to prosper. Peter had to change from his old self into his new self. Notice here, he doesn't call him Peter. Here he calls him Simon. Because his name was Simon in the world consciousness. His name was Simon in the limitations. His name was Simon when it came to not having enough or just enough. But when he calls him Peter, Simon was his name before Jesus renamed him Peter. So he's dealing with Simon. Hmm? Jesus is dealing with Simon. Jesus has to deal with all of our Simons. All of us got a Simon in us. Who was Simon? Simon was bold. Simon was, was, was bigoted. Simon was prejudiced. Simon was quick to talk and to act. You remember? It was Simon who cut off that soldier's Malchus's ear when they came to arrest Jesus. It, it was Peter that wanted to, to fight. It was Peter that went to cussing. After he denied Jesus, it, it was Peter, but it was, it was also him. It was, it was that Simon that got worked out of him and made him Peter that had caused him to stand on the day of Pentecost and say, this is not what you, it looks like. He said, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that in the last days I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. So Peter... Simon has to be dealt with. God is dealing with your Simon. He's dealing with your Simon. He's dealing with your Simon in order to turn you into the rock. What does Peter mean? Peter means rock. It's Petros. It was there that Jesus said on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose. You see how God does it? He gives you authority. He gives you power. He gives you the supernatural to be able to operate in abundance and overflow. Number two, Peter talked to Jesus. Number one, he let Jesus in his boat. Number two, he talked to Jesus. Come on, talk to Jesus. Talk to him. We, we are toiling. We, we are working. That's all toiling means we working. How many of y'all working? How many of y'all really work? I, I know, I know, I know some of y'all. Some of y'all, you know, the church is hard to get here, some of y'all, because you're working. They got you working. And, and so when you come, you come, and sometimes you're tired in your body. Sometimes you're weary because the days are long, but, but you're working, you're toiling. And it says that, that, that Simon Peter had toiled. He had worked all night long. But when he talked to Jesus, glory to God, you, you got to talk to Jesus. Songwriter said, just a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your trouble. He will hear your faintest cry. He will answer by and by. Weeks turn sometime into months. Months turn into years. And still nothing seems to be working. Toiling, working, toiling working. Let, let me tell you something what work really is. Work is really worship. Work is supposed to be worship. And, and so God does not want us toiling. God wants us to get in the place to where we can do what he put in us. What he called us to do. In fact, it seems sometime when we work, the harder we try, the worse it gets. The Bible says they've been working all night. Nothing seems to be working out. But Peter talked to Jesus. And when he talked to Jesus, Jesus gave him what to do. Number three is that point, what Jesus gave him to do. Because number three is that Peter obeyed Jesus. Not only did he talk to Jesus, but he obeyed Jesus. Come on, that's why some of us I found I won't talk to him. Because we won't do. Y'all know what I'm talking about. 
what he going to tell us to do. We, we know we in some stuff we ain't got no business being in. And if we start talking to Jesus, Jesus going to convict us and say that one ain't good. Don't do that. You need to let that one go. You need to quit doing that. Huh? But when he talked to Jesus, he obeyed him. And when you obey Jesus, you will have a net-breaking experience. When you obey Jesus, listen, Jesus said to Simon, because now he was talking to him. He said, Peter, launch your boat out into the deep and let down your nets. Notice there in that scripture, it says nets, S, plural, nets. Let down your nets near, look at what he says, near the shore in the shallow water. That's where Peter was, but God, Jesus said, launch out into the deep. And to launch out into the deep, listen, it means to move away from the comfort, move away from the safety of the shore. We like to stay too close to the edge when he tells us, come on deeper with me. Come on and get to know me more. Come on and walk with me. Come on, let me talk with you. Come on, let me bless you. Come on, let me take you to another level. Let me show you some secrets. Let me show you some mysteries. Let me show you some new mercies. Oh, bless his name. Let me take you to a higher level. Launch out to the deep, Luke 5 and 5. It says, but Simon Peter listened to him. He says, but Jesus, Master, we have toiled all night. Now he's going to tell them about it. Jesus knows about it. How many know he knows? He said, Jesus, we toiled all night. We've been working all night. And then not only have we been working all night, Jesus, we working and we can't get what we need to get. We've got nothing. Nevertheless, is there a nevertheless in you? You got to get a nevertheless in your soul. You got to get a nevertheless in your spirit. Peter says, nevertheless, at your word. Luke 5 and 5, look at it. Nevertheless, at your word. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Watch this now. Singular, net, no S. What did Jesus tell him? Let down your nets, plural, S. What does Peter do? Now watch this, because you, you got to get this. He still gets a blessing, but he doesn't have the blessing he would have had if he would have done exactly what Jesus told him to do. He says, I will let, Lord, I will let, down the net, singular. Luke chapter 5, verse 6. It says, when he had done this, they caught a great number of fish. And their net, singular, was breaking. You know why your net breaks? Because God told you to get nets. But you got a net. Because what we're going to do, we're we going we gonna to try it and see if God's going to do it. We're we, we going to test God. We're we going to see if God is who God really said he is. And God says, if you would just trust me, I don't only have a net, I have nets. In other words, I got more than enough for you. I've got overflow for you. I've got exceedingly and abundantly above all you could ask or think for you. I am the God of every need. I will supply not only some of your need, but I will supply all of your need. Look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. It says, my God will supply what? All my need. It was not until Peter started operating in complete obedience to God that he started seeing abundance. Please understand that it is not until you start operating in obedience to God that your life is going to change. It is not until you start operating in obedience to God that you begin to see abund abundance. You know, I learned this lesson when God told me years ago, he said, go to Atlanta. I said, Atlanta, I've never been there. God said, go anyway. 
I had a business. I was doing what I thought I wanted to do and needed to do. There was opportunities that I had. But God said, that's not what I called you to do. He said, what I called you to do is ministry. I said, well, God, I can do ministry right here. I don't need to go to Atlanta. God said, no, for what I have you to do, you got to go to Atlanta. Because I need you to learn some things that you cannot learn where you are. In other words, it was comfortable. It was, it was safe here in Denver. But, but he was saying to me, I need you to launch out into the deep. I need you to trust that I can go with you wherever you go. I can be your light. I can be your source. I can be your wheel in the middle of the wheel. I can be your healer. I can be your provider. I can be your friend when there's no friend. I can help you with a house. Oh, glory to God. I can help you to be able to drive. I can help you and you cannot learn what you need to learn if you keep doing what you're trying to do. You got to do what I told you to do. And, and, and when I did it, unusual blessing. Somebody say unusual blessing. Blessings is good. Let me tell you what a blessing is. A blessing is a wonderful thing. A blessing, really, we get them every day. You know, we, we get blessings every day. You know, when we wake up in the morning, that's a blessing. Huh? Huh? When, when we're able to put on our clothes and don't nobody have to put them on us, that's a blessing. When we have water to turn on and, and, and wash ourselves, that's a blessing. When, when we have food to put in our mouth, that's a blessing. When I can chew my own food and there ain't nobody that got to feed it to me, that's a blessing. When, when I got transportation and, and I can drive somewhere because I used to be on the bus, but now I'm driving. I may not be driving like I want to drive, but thank God I'm driving, but that's a blessing. And then when I get to the house of God, because somebody didn't make it here today, there is people here today that would be here if they could be here, but they cannot be here. But thank God I'm here today. And when I came today, I got hands to clap and praise them with. I got feet to, to, to dance with. I got a voice to praise them with. Come on, touch somebody and say, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. That, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. You, you can sit down for a minute. But, but what God wants us to do in this season of our life, and what he's telling us is he has a place in, us, in our lives. And he wants to take us to a place in him where there's unusual blessing unusual, come on, so unusual blessing. I, I, I ain't going to be able to finish this today. I, I'm going to have to finish it later. But, but he wants us to have unusual blessing. He wants us to have unusual favor. Oh, glory to God. But he's waiting for our obedience. Tell somebody he's waiting for your obedience. He's waiting for your obedience. When, when you obey God, he will make denials turn into yeses. I know what I'm talking about. It, it, it said that when they, when they obeyed, when Peter obeyed, he let his net down into the deep. Oh, God. It said that when he dropped his net, thank you, Jesus, that, that, that when his net got down there, they, they tried to pull the net up, and they couldn't get it up, and they had to keep on pulling. And when they got it up, it said that their whole boat was full, and it began, the net began to break. In other words, they barely had enough to get what God had for them. I'm talking about a God that's a God of overflow. I'm talking about a God that's a God of supernatural supply. When God called you, he didn't call you just for you. He called you for others. As you stand on your feet, God will bless you as you obey him and do what he's called you to do. There's a lesson, you all, in obedience that you can only learn through obedience. You can only learn when you do what God tells you to do. Oh, bless his name. How many of you ever obeyed God and God blessed you? You obeyed God and God made a way. You obey God and, and, and bus passes 
turned into vehicles. You obey God and, and he caused apartments to become homes. You, you obey God and your nets begin to break. Overflowing blessings. When God gives us blessings, Deuteronomy chapter 28, I just want to read it to you. God placed a couple of scriptures on my heart. This is what he says. This is what he says. The blessings of obedience. Deuteronomy 28. Some of y'all know what it means, what it says. It says, and it will come to pass if you will listen diligently to the voice of the Lord your God to observe to do all of his commandments which I command you this day that the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. This is for you today. That all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you if you will hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. If you will listen to God. If you will obey God. It says, blessed will you be in the city. Blessed will you be in the field. Blessed will be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your ground, the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your kind, and the flocks of your sheep. Blessed shall be your basket and your store. Blessed shall you be when you come out, and blessed shall you be when you come in. I want to pray for you today. I want to pray. How many believe those blessings? You believe those blessings. You believe those miracles. That overflow. You have to believe it in the spirit. You have to believe in the spirit. That what God has for you. God has for you. Oh, bless his name. Say, what God has for me, it is for me. Galatians chapter 3, verse 14, says that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. This is what I want you to hear today, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Come on and lift those hands. I, I 